Hi, I am Imruz Hussain, software engineer at AppScout. In this video, I am going to show you, uh, uh, I am going to give you an overview of the Stash Grafana dashboard. So let's get started. Uh, in this window, you can see the uh, new Stash Grafana dashboard. Uh, in the first overview section, here we have few cards. Uh, the first card showing how many application has been configured for backup in my cluster. Then in the second card is showing how many backup, uh, how many successful has backup has been taken. And in the in this section, uh, in this card, you can see how many backup are currently running. You can see currently one backup running. This will automatically get updated when uh, new backup session start or complete. And in this section, you will uh, you can say how many backup has been skipped. So when uh, a backup session start and stash C, there is already a running backup for the same target, then the backup uh, gets skipped. Uh, in this section, uh, you can see in this card uh, how many backup has failed. I can see currently one backup has failed. And here in this final card, you can see what is the total size of backup data in my cluster. So this is the combination of all the uh, combination of all the backup data for all the targets. Uh, here you can see a table, uh, all the targets uh, that has been configured for backup in my cluster. So you can see I have a back configure backup for a demo set, a deployment, and three databases and a stateful set. Uh, in this section, uh, you can see in this column, repository column, you can see who is, uh, you can see who is, uh, who is repository I am using to store the backup data for this, for this target. And here you can see what is the schedule for the backup for this target. And in the ready column, you will see uh, whether the backup are ready or not for this uh, target. And in the last uh, column, you will see when was the last successful backup was taken for this target. Then if we scroll down, uh, we can see uh, CPU and memory uses for the backup process. So here you can see the memory the CPU uses for the backup process. So if you uh, click on a particular uh, particular part, you will see the memory uses by this backup process. So uh, here I can see the CPU uses by this deployment sector. And we can, if you click here, we can see the CPU uses by the sidecar of the stateful set. Okay. So in the next section, you will see the memory uses graph by the backup process. Uh, this is actually a stacked graph. So uh, this actually showing how many, how much uh, memory has been used by all the backup process in my uh, cluster. So I can see all the backup process is taking around uh, 2.2 gigs of memory. Uh, if we click a particular, uh, particular, uh, the backup process, then we can see how much memory has, uh, has been taken by this backup process. So uh, let me take another one, yeah. So this is, uh, we can see this is a MariaDB backup job. This is actually a job. That's why it started, uh, uses some memory and yeah, it released the memory when the backup process has been completed. So if we can check another MongoDB, you can see the backup process has started, uh, took some memory use then it completed and released those memory. If we uh, go to stateful set, so you can see uh, for a stateful set, we actually use a sidecar for backup process. So this is the uh, memory uses by the sidecar. Uh, we actually can filter this target or backup process uh, using namespace or target kind or target name. So here I can see I have two namespaces, db and demo. 
if we click on db namespace, I can see all the backup of my db namespaces. Uh, then if we click on my demo namespace, I can see all my workload in this demo namespace. Then we can also filter uh, using uh, target kind. For example, here I have demo on site deployment. If we click demo on site deploy, so I can see I have only one uh, backup on one deployment, uh, backup configured for one deployment. So if we we can further uh, for example, if you if we have multiple deployment, then we can further filter it by the deployment name. So let's click all for now. Okay, now if we scroll down, we can see a list for the recent backup. So this is the recent backup. Uh, so we can see our daemon backup has failed and our deployment backup and MariaDB backups succeeded. Uh, this is the uh, phase of the last backup, this backup session. And uh, this is uh, this session duration uh, showing how much time took to complete this backup session. And in this creation timestamp show when the back this backup session was started. Okay. So if we scroll down here, we can see a list of repository where I am storing my backup data. So this is my uh, repository name. This is their namespace. And in this uh, backend column, we'll see which backend I am using. Currently I'm using Google Cloud Store, So this is ECS. Uh, if I use AWS, it will update it accordingly. And this showing the what is the back bucket name for my, uh, where I'm storing the data. And this is prefix section is showing uh, the directory inside the bucket, uh, inside this test testing bucket where I'm storing the data for this deployment backups. And in this section, uh, snapshot count, we can see how much snapshot uh, has been taken in this repository. So I can see for demo set, I have four snapshot. For deployment, I have five snapshot. And for a stateful set, actually my stateful set has three replicas and I am taking backup uh, each of them. So uh, total, I have 15 snapshot. And in the size column, you can see what is the size of this repository. And in the last backup time column, you will see when the last successful backup was taken in this repository. Then we have a graph showing how our repository going over time. So if we, we can see our repository is growing. Uh, currently it is around 20.3 uh, megabytes. Uh, if we uh, if we select a particular repository, we can see how how this is going over time. Actually, uh, this will give a good overview when uh, this will give you a good overview uh, how much data has be, is being uploaded in each backup session. So, if your application data does not change over time. Uh, this will be, uh, this uh, graph will get flat over time. But if your application data changes a lot, uh, you will see increase in this repository size. Then in the next section, we have uh, metrics for restore sessions. So here I have five restore attempt uh, for my different, uh, different targets and four of them have succeeded and one failed. So you can see which one failed. And when in the restored column, we can see when I tried this uh, restore for this application. So, uh, and in the session duration column, you will see how much time take has taken to uh, complete the restore process for this target. Uh, if we, uh, okay. So in the CPU column, actually, uh, I have <laughs> very small uh, small data to register. So you can see my, our repository size 12 bytes or few kilobytes. So actually uh, there is no enough information to show this graph. When your uh, re register size is large, uh, then you will see the repository and memory usage graph. 
uh, if we click actually we have one memory disk so if you click here you can see uh, this is the memory used by my uh, stateful set register process uh, actually we use init container that's why uh, when it started restored it complete restore and then when init container completed it released this memory memory okay in the next section uh, we can see matrix for our it's just operator port. Uh, as you know, our operator port has two container. One is stash operator, where actually uh, all the controllers are running. And another is push gateway that uh, temporarily hold the uh, backup matrix, backup register matrix. So this is the CPU users graph. Uh, green one is for stash operator, uh, is operator container. And uh, Sorry for interruption. Uh, so, okay. So this green graph actually showing the CPU uses by our stash operator container, and the yellow one is showing the CPU uses by the push gateway container. Uh, and the next graph you can see the memory uses by our operator container and the memory uses by our push gateway container. So this is the uh, dashboard for stash. Uh, I think this will uh, help you, this will give you good overview of the, uh, how the backup is running in your cluster and will give you a survey, um, a good source of uh, analyzing uh, an issue with the backup. So you can actually do some interesting thing with this dashboard. For example, if you look at this uh, backup memory or CPU uses graph, you can see there is lots of, uh, uh, you can see in this in this section, uh, my memory uses uh, has increased significantly. So if you select here, you can see uh, uh, lots of backup process has started here. So uh, you can see, yeah, uh, many of the backup process has started at this time. So using this information, you can plan how uh, you can plan how, uh, how what to uh, how your schedule should be. Uh, so your backup, uh, all the backup does not start at the same period. You can distribute your backup process over uh, different times. So uh, your cluster has less pressure for network and uh, GPU memory bandwidth. Okay, thank you for staying with us. This was all from my side. Thank you.